Hey guys, Ryan here. And next week, starting on Wednesday, Ranked will officially be introduced to Warzone and we're finally going to be able to play Warzone Ranked. And while of course I am actually very, very excited for it, I'm also pretty convinced it's going to come out in a pretty bad state for at least the higher ranks. Let's begin with the biggest issue I think we're going to have with Ranked and that's going to be the cheating problem. Because I work from home, I spend a lot of my time watching streamers play this game and a lot of Warzone streamers have been playing ranked multiplayer recently. And if you've watched any top player who's in the higher ranks at all play in the last two weeks or so, almost every game has at least one cheater if not more in it. It's not simply just like, oh, I, this is confirmation bias. No, this is actually out of control and if they have that issue in multiplayer cheating with eight person lobbies, how in the world are they gonna rein in cheaters on 150 person man lobbies? I mean, explain it to me, please, because I love this game, I will defend it to death, and I thought the anti-cheat was actually very good the first year we had it in Caldera, but right now, this anti-cheat is clearly vulnerable. There's clearly walls and aimbots that are getting through the anti-cheat and they're not banning these people and they keep making accounts and they're just gonna infest the game. And with Warzone 2 being free to play, guys, that means the barrier to entry is so much lower than multiplayer. Because if you wanna play multiplayer ranked, you have to buy the game or at least have an account that has the game bought or a license to it. So what are these people gonna do when they can just make free accounts? Yeah, they might get banned, but then they're just gonna make new accounts and they're gonna cheat their entire way through the ranks. They're gonna start in bronze, then they're gonna go through silver and gold and they're gonna get to the higher ranks. And so it doesn't matter what rank you're at, you're gonna be dealing with cheaters because even if they ban the cheaters, they're just gonna make new accounts and you're gonna find them in your own ranked games. Now, this isn't to say that there isn't some way that they're gonna update the end cheat and it could be better on the release of ranked. However, in its current state, ranked multiplayer is in a terrible place right now and I just can't see it getting that much better in one week of time. And this also leads me to my second point, and that's I think, unfortunately, if you don't have a set team of three for Warzone ranked, you're gonna be at a massive disadvantage and it's probably gonna make you a worse player by one or two entire ranks. This is a phenomenon that anyone who's ever played ranked Apex will know through and through. If you play with the set group of three in Apex, your experience is so much different than someone who solo queues and you actually feel like you can improve, you actually feel like tactics are relevant, and you feel like you have a consistent baseline to base your play off of with your teammates. I think what's going to happen for a lot of people is they're going to hop on, they're going to go on YouTube or Twitch or whatever, they're going to watch these clips of their favorite content creators doing these crazy plays with their friends in Ranked. And they're going to be playing in a trio team who has a comprised combined KD of 9.4. And your team's KD total combined probably isn't even going to reach 3 or 4 total KD. And you're going to try and compare yourself to those players. This is something I experienced when playing competitive Warzone. In Warzone tournaments, what you usually do is you play 2v2 kill races. So what you have is teams of 2 in quads spread out. And you're probably saying to yourself, that sounds difficult, that's duo quads. No, it's the exact opposite. When you have that many good players running around the map, when you're playing with people that talented, things just become easy. Your trades are automatically picked up. People are dying. They're already weak by the time you shoot them. You guys have the key position. You can easily battle squads who have better position than you because you probably have better aim. And when you play with players like that, it's easy. However, if you're like most people and you don't play competitive Warzone and you don't know the people I do or that they do, you're probably gonna be solo queuing or playing with your friends who aren't very competitive in nature and you're gonna have a much, much different experience. You're gonna have teammates that aren't gonna drop money for you, they aren't gonna rotate with you when you need them to, they aren't gonna revive you, they aren't gonna have your back and a lot of people are gonna be extremely frustrated with the way Warzone works because you have to play trios to do Warzone ranked and I know a lot of you guys are probably saying, oh, well, I'll just deal with it, yada, yada, yada. But I promise guys, it's gonna be frustrating for a lot of you guys. I think a lot of the biggest complaints are actually gonna stem from people having bad teammates that they're probably feeling like are holding them back. And I do think that's gonna happen to some degree. A lot of people would probably be one to two ranks higher if they just had a set squad of three they could consistently play with. It's pretty much what I see all the time happen in Apex Legends. When I play with people, they can be at X rank, but then we start playing with them, we get them always playing with their squad, and they always just start climbing the ranks way easier because we can just actually have strategy, we can communicate, and we understand how each other plays. So moving into my third point here, 
Warzone is just not in a good state right now, guys. Now, the game is still littered with bugs, and I have to say this kind of, you know, with understanding that I do expect this game to have a lot of bugs. This game is so big, it has so many layers to it, when you have thousands of developers working on a game, it has to be so hard to find the different bugs and to find all of the areas where the game's gone wrong and there's issues, and I can't envision it's an easy task when you have that many people working on a game like this. This game is just too big for them to easily find bugs. However, the servers are atrocious and everyone who's been playing at all recently can attest to that. The servers just aren't kinda bad, they are horrendous. Like I am talking about people are always complaining about lag every single time I play and we all know it's server lag because we're all experiencing it at the same time. The amount of times I've had good games just end it because of lag because the server will literally crash because of so much lag, it is insane. And this is the only time I've seen Warzone like this. I've seen Warzone have bad servers before, but I've never seen it so consistent for such an extended period of time where the servers have been this bad with this many issues and they have yet to address it or fix it. And I don't understand what's going on. I'm not sure if it's the AI or something like that, but something is going wrong on the back end to cause the servers to not function properly. And we never had this in Warzone 1. So I'm very curious as to why we're experiencing it in Warzone 2. But anyways, I'm still excited for ranked for Warzone and everything like that. I think it's going to make for great content and it's going to lead me to my next two points. If you do want to get better at Warzone and you do like content like this and you really want to get better at ranked, I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching that does start around $20 for what I consider a little package. What I do is you send me gameplay, I watch some things on it, I give you a little write-up and then we play it for about an hour, hour and a half, two hours and then I give you more tips. So that's why I call it a little package thing and that starts about $20, although it can go more based on however much coaching you want, yada, yada, yada. But the reason I'm talking about this in relation to ranked is because on the flip side, I also do plan on doing a series where I play ranked with viewers. And the whole point of this is rather than playing ranked with my friends that play competitive Call of Duty and are super sweaty where I could probably get top 250 with, and I probably will at some point, I actually wanna start by playing with people who are of a lower skill bracket and of a lower talent, and I can actually help them fix the issues that are most commonly gonna be seen amongst people at that level. If I just make content for the best of the best, or I just play with the best players, I'm going to lose so much perspective on the average player's struggles in ranked, and that's something I really don't want. I've almost always played with people who are around a 1KD, aside from when I'm doing competitive Warzone, and I've always taken pride in that. I've always taken pride that I can play with people who are of a lower skill level and still have success with them, but it also helps me understand what I need to be making in terms of coaching content. If I was just playing with the best players and playing with people on my own skill level, how would I know what the average player is doing? I wouldn't. The only way I get to actually know is because I'm consistently playing with people who are quote unquote average players and I want to continue that with ranked. But with all of that being said, I am going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for even taking the time out of your day to watch these videos. If you enjoy content like this, maybe leave a like, maybe consider subscribing. But overall, hope you have a good day. It's been Ryan. Peace.